reactions and temperature. In the universe, things want to be as stable as possible. That's not very stable. Neither is that, but that is. And the same goes for chemicals as well. If chemicals come together and they can be more stable by reacting, then they will. Sometimes when chemicals react, they take in energy from their surroundings and they get colder in doing so. That is an endothermic reaction. Endo being in and thermic being heat. If when chemicals react they give out heat, that's an exothermic reaction. Exo meaning out and thermic again meaning heat. We have got two great demonstrations here. One of endothermic reactions, so it'll get colder, and one exothermic. Emma is now going to do the first one. This is the endothermic reaction. Do -si -do there. Do -si -do. Yes, Emma's now going to measure out five really good spatula fulls of barium hydroxide. So when you say good spatula falls, you mean like this? I mean, oh goodness me, that's not not that many like well, that then. You can actually pile up this barium hydroxide. Yeah, it sticks to it, it, so. But it has a lot of water in there, and um, a lot of water. Believe you me, that's good. Now that is, is that good. Sufficient? That's sufficient. I like that a lot. And now. The same amount, the same number of spoon, but you won't get the same. It doesn't pile up so much. This is ammonium chloride. So, about five of these, I think. Oh, yes. Well, I actually just five. did four very good ones. Well, four very good ones. Let's have a look. I think you might, you think you might need another one. There we are. Is that sufficient? That's sufficient. That is absolutely perfect. Right, you know. Now what Emma's going to do is she's now going to wet the wooden block. You will see why in a moment. There. A good bit of water. That's, that would be marvellous. And now put the beaker in the water. That is good. Excellent. And now that was now of course, that's, well, that's put some of the water there. <laughs> put some more on. Put some more on. That's right. She wants to turn the beaker around a little bit so we get the cameras in. We don't actually see all of the um, all the writing. Now we're going to put the two reactants together and give them a good old mix. There we are. Reactant number one. That's our barium hydroxide, and now the ammonium chloride. And the good old stare. That's right. That's good. There's going to be a bit of ammonia gas given off here. So, you we can't see it, but we've got the ventilation on. Of course, Emma is ready for this. She is wearing her glasses. She's wearing the lab coat and, of course, the gloves. It's now, turned into mush and it's now... turned into oh, it's, mush. Look at it's that. It's like an unusual looking milk. I think you I shouldn't go drinking it, though. That's, that's no, right. I now, I am going to find my little bit of litmus here. I'm going to put some water on it, a bit of damp. And now, hold it over there, and oh, goodness, yes. that has gone blue. Tends to suggest that we've got ammonia there. We can smell it a little bit. It smells like... Um, yeah. um, dirty babies' nappies. Nappies. That's right. Another test, which is really good. This used to be called the vapours of yogi. If you take ah, the top off that, there we go. and woof them together, 
Yeah, oh, straight the, away. The Look at that. <laughs> there we are. That's right. That's producing that the ammonium chloride. Right. Pop that back on there. It's like that's a little steaming. Now without let's turning measure it the temperature. Let's see what we've got. Right. There we are. So, <laughs> it's smoky. <laughs> Uh, so it's dropping down quite rapidly, dropping. almost at zero, but it was at um, just under 20. Yeah, we're about 20 here in the Geeknik lab at the moment as we speak. Where are we now? What temperature are we doing? Drop down to zero. Drop down to zero. And we're still going. Yes. Now this thermometer only goes down to minus 10. This experiment can plunge down to about minus 20 or it's thereabouts. dropping down to minus 5. So we are not going to be touching any of the, um, of the beaker here or anything like that. How are we doing? Still at minus 5. Still at minus 5. Right. Yeah. Okay. Not as cold as I've had it go before, so who knows? What we're going to hope for... Minus seven. Minus seven. What we're going to hope for is it's gone cold enough to freeze some of the water which we put on the wood. Let's see. There. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Absolutely frozen. Yep. No, mistake. no mistake. There we are. So that is an endothermic reaction. It's got colder. It's taken in heat from its environment to make the reactants more stable when they produce their products. Now we move on. We have got exothermic reaction to do. Right. You have already been grinding away at the iodine. Okay. We have two very interesting elements here. Iodine, which comes as little pellets, and has been grinding away to make a really fine powder. We've also got fine powdered aluminium as well. And when they react together, they give out an awful lot of heat and they produce, well, aluminium iodide. We're not going to do that in here though. We're going to take our cameras outside. This is an outside broadcast. But right now what Emma's doing is she's getting the um, the powders and putting them in individual crucibles. We're not going to mix them in here because the reaction can spontaneously start. That's good. That's nearly the iodine in. The last dregs are being scraped. <laughs> yes. No. I'm sure that will be absolutely fine. Can that? Yeah, that'd be great. And now we will... Still a, still a bit... That doesn't matter. Look for another experiment later in there. And now, about the same amount of aluminium. Fine aluminium powder. That's good. That will be good. That will be good. That will be good. Yeah. Okay. That's smashing. Okay. Right, are we ready? Ready. We'll see you outside in just a moment. Welcome back. The outside broadcast cameras are on and we are ready <laughs> for our exothermic <laughs> experiment. <laughs> Emma is going to mix the iodine powder with the aluminium powder. Make sure it's all thoroughly mixed together. A few drops of water. I'm going to stand back. <laughs> I'm going to stand back right now. <laughs> Over to you. Charming. Five drops. Oh, 
it's starting to smoke. Here we go, here we go. <laughs> it's got purple smoke coming out. <laughs> That's very cool. <laughs> Look at that. Oh my god, there's like um, a purple flame. A properly purple flame. so cool. It's like a quick way to paint a wall. Look at the colour. It's going through so many different um, phases in the bowl. Like a flame and then it's got, it's, it's almost like um, when you see a volcano and you look down and it's got like the lava underneath. After our fabulous demonstration of exothermic reactions outside, the cameras have been brought back in again and we're now safe and sound in the Geek Nick lab. Or so we think. <laughs> yes, indeed. We are going to be looking at exothermic reactions still, but we're going to calm things down because we don't want things exploding in here really or, or you know, setting themselves on fire. We are going to be looking at the neutralisation of hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide and look at the temperature changes during that neutralization i'm just going to charge up one of the burettes here with two molar hydrochloric acid i'm just going to charge it so that it just goes above the zero mark on the burette i'm just then going to um, put the <laughs> just making sure that this valve is closed <laughs> it's running out not a good idea and i'm just then going to um, put the reagent bottle down here and run it down to the zero mark or thereabouts. It doesn't need to be that accurate. We're not doing a volumetric analysis um, today. Okay. Smashing. That's ready. Now Emma's going to measure out approximately, again, doesn't have to be that accurate, but approximately 30 millilitres of two molar sodium hydroxide. Just remember, just the meniscus, just nudging the 30 mark on the, on the cylinder. Right, and now that Emma is putting that into our vacuum flask, our dewer flask, <laughs> named after the person who we supposedly invented it. Are we ready? And we're taking a temperature. Right. Yes, the temperature. It Trusty is. Trusty notebook. 20 degrees. 20 degrees, which is good because that is the temperature of the Geek Nick lab as we speak. And now, time is of the essence. So I was going to run in five milliliters of the hydrochloric acid and then give a quick, and then we're Technical gonna take, term. yep. <laughs> then we're gonna take the temperature after five milliliters. Let's see. 24. Oh my head, 24, that's, wow, that's quite a lot actually. Right, and another five. Right, let's see where we are after a total of 10 millilitres. I'm poised. 26. <laughs> 26, that's Next. good. Right, and another five going in, and a quick swirl, <laughs> and then a measure. It's very energetic, all of this. It is, isn't it? Push. Right. Oh, 29. 29, and now we're going for another five, which will take us up to 20 millilitres. And another mix. How are we doing? As you can see. Poised. I am. Always. 31. Oh, 31. 25 will be the next stop on our journey. 25 millilitres. Uh, quick swirl. What have we got? 33. 33. That's smashing. 33. And now 30 millilitres this will take us to now. So we're pretty much there when it comes to neutralisation. We got two molar of each, didn't we? How, what are we 33. doing? 33. 33. Mm, all right, so let's put in some more. Another five. That'll take us up to 35. So now we've gone past the neutralisation stage. What have we got? 
32 going down, absolutely, and another five. That's to be expected because the reactions have now stopped, of course. I'm now just running a cooler liquid into a slightly warmer liquid, so you're just going to get the whole thing cooling down a bit more. What have we got? Oh, 31. 31. Let's put, let's go, let's have some fun. Just do another one. Let's see. Well, we well much. <laughs> we've got nothing else planned for the day, so let's put another five millilitres in and <laughs> see what happens. Oh, dear. <laughs> How are we doing? And we are at 30. 30, yeah. I think we can see the trend there. No doubt there will be a graph and some music and probably me talking over, but there we go. <laughs> that is smashing. That is a job well done. We've done reactions and the temperature. Until next... <laughs> there we are. Normally do this at the beginning. Right. <laughs> Until next time, uh, take case, care. It's solved. Okay, it's solved. I'll see you soon. Oh, that actually worked quite well. That is actually a really good graph. Just very important. Matter in the universe wants to be as stable as possible. If chemicals can become more stable by reacting with each other, then they will. Often, there will be an energy difference between the reactants and the products during a reaction. If energy is released during the reaction, some of this may be liberated as heat, making the surroundings hotter. This is an exothermic reaction. On the other hand, if energy is needed during the reaction, heat may be drawn in, making the surroundings colder. This is an endothermic reaction. The neutralization of the alkali sodium hydroxide by hydrochloric acid is exothermic. It gives off heat as the reactants become more stable. The temperature rises during the reaction when 5 ml increments of 2 molar hydrochloric acid are added to a single 30 ml volume of 2 molar sodium hydroxide can be measured using a calorimeter. Here we are using a vacuum flask and a thermometer. A continual temperature rise is recorded as more acid is added. When the amount of acid is equal to the amount of alkali, the point of neutralisation, the reaction stops and the temperature remains constant. As more acid is added, the temperature begins to fall as the excess acid is cooling down the reaction products in the calorimeter. Emery's now going to pour. <laughs> <laughs> so I've just put sodium. Could we do it the other way around? Sodium hot drop drops. Say yes. The problem is that we've already had. No, no. Wait, what's happening now? Oh, no, 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 no. You just contaminated all oh, this now. Oh. oh God. <laughs> right. For the viewers, I know that this will be in the outtakes. This did have hydrochloric acid in it. So now we've contaminated. It's now quite warm. So, now, so now we've contaminated not only the whole burette and the funnel, but now we've contaminated. We only add a small drop at the bottom. It doesn't matter about the price. It's the fact I've got to make up another load of it now. So um, we'll we'll take a break and we'll be back. And I've made up some more two molar. So we can't do it around. Well, we could, but this is all contaminated now. So um, not really, not very much. No, not very much. But I don't. I don't oh, No, let me, let's do this properly. <laughs> we'll be back. <laughs> well, I've got to get this out now, haven't I? Oh.